Today at school, people came to talk to us about their jobs. It was cool to hear from the mail carrier. I work at the U.S. Postal Service. My job is to deliver mail and packages that come from all over the United States, and even from around the world, sent to people in our town. There are thousands of mail carriers like me in every neighborhood across the country. People send letters to their friends and family telling them about how they are and what they are doing. Lots of mail comes from my parents, and I wish more came addressed to me, like when I get cards for my birthday. Do people still write letters now that so many people have computers? That's when things got really interesting. Her eyes opened wide and she looked so excited. There are lots of reasons to write and send a letter. You can send a thank you note for your new jump rope or a letter to your pen pal in another state. You can send a postcard from your trip to Kansas where you saw the world's largest ball of twine. You can even send pictures of the new cat you adopted. Letters feel more personal than an email and last longer than a phone call. Some people save their cards and letters for many years. A letter is your own unique masterpiece. You can decide exactly how you want to write your letter. Fancy, super neat, or extra colorful. You can doodle, draw a picture, or send a photo that goes along with your letter. This is where I started to get so many ideas all at once. I thought about who I could write to and what I could tell them about me. I also thought about what I could ask in my letter so I could learn more about the person I was writing to. You have to send a letter in order to get a letter. And if you want to send a letter, you have to know how to write one. Try saying hi first. There's lots of ways to say it. Pick one that matches how you want to sound and what you think the person you're writing would like to hear. Another important thing she taught us is that the other person is able to read your letter when they get it. So you've got to make sure your letters are clear. Read it out loud to yourself. You might even ask someone else in your home or classroom to read it. They'll tell you if everything sounds right. And pictures are always a big hit. Don't forget to say goodbye at the end of your letter and write your name so the person knows who it's from. Now you're ready to put your letter in an envelope and get it ready to mail. You need to put two addresses on it. First, you write the name of the person you're sending the letter to. That goes in the middle of the envelope. Their address goes under their name, like this. Next, your name and address go in the top left corner, like this. Every envelope that enters the mail stream needs postage. Usually that's in the form of a stamp. Stamps come in lots of designs, and many people like to collect stamps as a hobby. Your stamp can add some of your personal flair to the envelope. Lastly, you need to close the envelope to seal it up. You might be wondering how your letter will reach your friend. Well, you need to put it in a mailbox, either at your house, in a blue collection mailbox, or at a post office. Then, each letter starts an exciting journey to its final destination. First, it's brought to the sorting facility, where the letter gets separated by zip code. Every town has at least one zip code. That's how the Postal Service knows where to deliver your letter. Next, your letter rides in a truck or on foot to its destination. If you live in Florida, it might be a bicycle. Through sunshine, rain, snow, and even a freak frog storm, your letter pushes onward. The letter keeps moving until it gets delivered to your friend's mailbox. And then your friend will be excited to send a letter back to you. Writing letters back and forth is a great way to build a friendship. Your very own letter. Pretty cool, right? Brought to you by the U.S. Postal Service.